In this video, I'm going to show you the five ways to brainstorm, most importantly, using the software called Microsoft Whiteboard. And in here, we're going to look at different methods and how to create it, and also how this can be implemented when you're in a classroom, in the boardroom, or in this case, we're going to look at it based on our science perspective, specifically looking at chemistry concepts and how you can implement these in the classroom. And believe me, this can be applicable in all areas of your professional life and how you're going to be able to collaborate not only with your students but also with a team of people. So let's dive into the five brainstorming activities. Number one is affinity diagrams. As you see on the screen right here, we have a little description on the top left side of this particular table that is created using whiteboard and now for you to have these to be incorporated here what you do without recreating it from scratch is to click on the plus sign and once you go down here to template we have brainstorm and once you click on that we have our affinity diagram there is a brief description about what it is about in terms of it being an organized ideas and data into cluster based on common themes this here is a more descriptive and really efficient way of knowing how to use this particular template now in here is where we're going to have our props we're going to look at elements to groups so in this case what we are going to do is we're going to have students first of all listing all elements they can think about and they put them in this particular first column and in order for them to do that all they do is right click and click note and you can add oxygen or type down oxygen and once you have that students can continue to do that and populate it in this particular cell the next step here is to be able to move those specific cards over to the right columns based on the groups that are right here you have group one elements whichever one that is a group one element in this case when they look closely you see hydrogen is here sometimes hydrogen is in group 17 but you know what it's fine another one here is lithium it doesn't matter what color based on what the specific table color is it doesn't matter some students can be creative with the color and match it up with the column color but some not really so that is absolutely fine another one here is we have aluminum move it to 13 uh, we have neon and neon can move to group 18 which is noble gas and oxygen here group 16 however no 16 right here so that is one of the interesting ways by which you can be able to implement this particular type of brainstorming activity based on affinity diagrams the next one we're going to look at is brain writing and brain writing of course your brain is not writing things down but how can you have what you have in your brain and put it on a particular script and this here requires this particular skill that is called brainstorming and yes enough for we to create this and yes i didn't recreate this this was actually already created by this particular tool by clicking on the plus sign going to template and when you go on brainstorming you're going to see it on the brain writing it has a description right here build of each other's ideas to generate as many options as possible and this actually comes handy when you are given a particular template like this that is already created where you can change this to specific groups that you have in your classroom or individual students in your classroom and you have a couple of rounds that are for each role moving down and for the first round it's just basic idea on hey what is equilibrium basically focusing mainly on chemical equilibrium and here students can actually add their results their findings a uh, couple of ideas and this can be built on as you move down based on the next question so this here is pretty much a scaffolded method by which students can open up more and be more in tuned with that particular concept 
other honorable mentions here is that while this brainstorm is happening, you saw a little bit of a pop-up that showed different icons and those icons are right over here. You can see a thumbs up if people like that, if you all love, which means, oh man, I love this stuff or you have a happy face or maybe something to think about or maybe, you know, I think that is something to think about or kind of have no question about. It doesn't say specifically what it is, but yeah, you get the gist. So this is really wonderful to have this set up here. All these questions is based off of equilibrium, judging from the different factors that students can think of that affects equilibrium of a system to develop a chemical formula or equation. And from that equation, they'll be able to pick one factor and figure out a way that increasing that factor will impact the specific equilibrium of your chemical equation. And the other one here is when you decrease it, what happens to the direction of equilibrium? And finally here is doing an in-depth research on how equilibrium applies to the real world example. This here is your second strategy on how to brainstorm, which is called brain writing. Yes, the third one is brainstorm. And of course, this is another strategy that is important to remember when it comes to creating brainstorming activities. And this here requires a skill <laughs> that your colleagues or clients or students will be able to dive into, which is brainstorming. So this is really important because in here, when you're trying to introduce a general concept to a student or series of clients, you want to get to know their thoughts about it specifically just one concept. And in this case, for example, here, we want our clients to, Hey, tell us all they need to know about an atom. I know some of them can type up here or click on this pencil here and type the following which is oh atom is uh, let's say something small um you can say consists or has um a proton neutron uh proton uh, some students or clients can like oh you know what there's not enough space um to add more and the reason why they want this particular type of card is because it has the following icons that the students can rate or clients can rate. So now in order for them to do that, all you just have to do is click on this and control V and you're able to paste by that way, students can add more and more and more and more and many more and many ideas can just be popping in and out some students would like to be distinct in their take on it by changing the color and introduce some nice you know diversity in this particular workspace here so it's really incredible to see how this can be taken advantage of when it comes to just brainstorming one single idea or one single question and based on this you know you can discuss with the class as to each of the various points that were made and maybe make connections by using a pen and seeing how from small this contains a proton and someone else can just like you know what let's add one more point and what else do you think an atom will have and you can just type oh neutron and someone can just say oh another person is like yay electron and someone can just like you know what let me change the color of this to green just to have that feeling of electron in there and some from there connections can be built on this now the next question is this how about coming from one topic that everyone is brainstorming about to many topics that are introduced and you want everyone to brainstorm and share various topics or subtopics that can be gathered from that main topics and so this is where this new strategy here which is called topic brainstorm allows for that particular task or skill to be established and in here we have a couple of listed topics which is Adam and we talked about this already now other students can jump into what do they want to know maybe about molecules what are the questions that they might have or what are the things that they already know about molecules likewise for compound for homogeneous mixture and also for heterogeneous mixture. So all these things are really fantastic for students to actually take advantage of. They can add more as always by control C, control V, and they can add as much information here as possible 
along each of the specific columns. So really fantastic for your team or students to be able to leverage this particular tool by that way you as an instructor will be able to look back and see how maybe this particular topic which is atom can tie really well to molecules and how molecules can tie really well to compounds and many more based on each of those specific topics now the next and final one is looking at mood board and mood board is quite fascinating because in here we have a couple of empty spaces and you might be wondering what are these spaces for the big thing here is this this is where students can shine through creativity they can create how they can interpret various concepts or connections of concepts either building a mind map like for example here we can for example ask a question how can you classify matter based on a mind map write down matter and then they can draw arrows that connects of uh, it's broken down into either pure substances and mixture and then they can continue with this particular breaking down of pure substances into atoms and they can have molecules and so on and this is really one way of going about it another way of adding stuff to this particular species is by going to this plus sign and you click on notes and once you have that you have different ways by which you can add a sticky note and once you do that you can just click on any color of your choice and then click here and you can now type other things like for example in this case you can start by putting matter here and you can just explain a little bit more about a descriptive way of classifying matter and many more like that so this is another way and students can read this if you prefer or you feel that you want to get feedback from students based on their reaction and so whichever one pleases you go for that another one that is kind of you know i need hopefully this particular software to improve on is images and another method here is when you want to add images by going back here we have image once you click on this icon it takes you to your specific folder or your computer base where maybe if you have an image that you want to add in here you go for that i wish that they could improve on this by having an option for online images that you can put in this particular workspace or this particular whiteboard so in this case all you just do is go to um, google, go on google or bean.com and grab an image that you please and once you go there uh, for example i just type like let's say um climate change and once i type that i have this information right here about climate change and there are maybe a couple of images once you click on that we have all these right here and one of your choice that you think is uh, relevant um you can click on or copy and paste it so you can just uh copy is that what it yeah copy image and hopefully when you paste it it should be able to insert itself right here so paste and voila there we have it so that is the only thing that you know is kind of lacking that is what you need to be aware of when it comes to inserting images or typing up a particular sticky note or just using the writing tool that we have right here to type up your ideas or draw a mind map on this particular space so I hope you found this informative in terms of the five ways by which you can implement brainstorm activities efficiently either in your group settings, in the classroom or institutions. And I hope you found this very informative. All the same, please hit the comment down below. Let me hear your thoughts about others that I may have missed and many more that you think will be a great way to manipulate and introduce cool brainstorm activities in your gatherings by that way i can talk to you all soon stay smart as always and believe in yourselves